we could play that, just you and me, but I don't think it'd be quite as exciting with two people. No, no. But I might win. <laughs> well, you might stand more of a chance. Yeah. Because, yeah. That's a one in two chance, isn't it? Well, that's right, it's one in four. And at least if you lose, it's only against me as opposed to all three of us. Yeah. Sarum today, all being well, and we're heading up this path in front of Graham. I think you can probably just see it, and that's the hill we're climbing. It doesn't look very tall in the camera, to be honest. I think it's a little bit higher than it looks. Rather hoping we'll get a nice view, maybe of the caravan site, when we get to the top. We shall see. Old Sarum is the site of the earliest settlement of Salisbury. It's to, about two miles north of where the city stands now. The Romans, Normans and Saxons all left their mark there. Old Sarum was used as an Iron Age hill fort between about 400 BC and AD 43. It was in fact one of the largest in England. The Romans occupied the site until about AD 410. After that, William the Conqueror established a royal castle at Old Sarum in the middle of the earthworks. That was shortly after 1066. There was also a period here when King Henry II's Queen, Eleanor, uh, was kept as a prisoner here. It's said that she was accused of inciting her sons to rebel against her father. But who knows? We know what the kings were like in those days. I think we should get one of these for Merlin. I told you we should get a flag for Merlin. I've just read what it says and clearly, clearly this castle belongs to me. Eleanor. I think that means you should be in prison. In 1075 they built a cathedral on this site. The cathedral was demolished during the medieval period and the pictures that you're about to see now are what's left of it. It's a bit like the Tower of London. They actually have crows here, or ravens maybe. <laughs> They're crows, are they? The poor man's raven. <laughs> Looking after the joint. It's been done really well because if you look, you can see like the paths that we're following. Um, so it makes it nice to walk around are actually the outlines of the old cathedral. So they, it's like a giant map really, is the best way of describing it. So if you follow the paths around, you're actually going around the perimeter, I imagine the original walls of the cathedral. Actually it's quite impressive. It's very impressive actually. It's an open air cathedral. <laughs> but that shouldn't matter, should it really? Sign we'll go and find the sign, see what else we can, there's one here too, see what else we can find out. So we're stood at the back of the cathedral, which uh, is like where ordinary people went, which sounds perfect actually, and we're facing what would have been the altar. So now we're walking up through the middle of the church. They've marked out here with these crosses 
um, what would have been, I imagine, the supports, the columns. great big columns, that's the word, columns. And we're now walking up the steps. Headed in the direction of the altar. So I wonder if this is if they had choirs in those days and if this would be where they would be sat. It's hard to know, isn't it? Imagine there were lots of little rooms and little side chapels. That's what all the other markings are for. So we're now heading towards the altar. this bit was the crypt I don't know really I'm guessing we're being cryptic <laughs> Very special carpet. Lots of beautiful flowers and bees. And some of these flowers are just so pretty. Oh, these pink and white flowers are gorgeous. I don't know what they all are, but the bees seem to know what they are and seem to be munching away, which is lovely. Here we are, up on top of Sarum Hill, looking down at Salisbury Cathedral. And the eagle-eyed of you might mention, might uh, note that you can see Merlin down there in the bottom, near the bottom right. And there's the circus come to town. We've stopped for a little break. Mm. Gonna have a little snack. We have. Poor little Luna's scared stiff. You probably can't hear it on the video, but in the distance there is the sound from Salisbury Plain of tanks firing weapons. And uh, she can hear that. She's shaking like a leaf, poor little mite. This is nice, isn't it? Yes, cheers, darling. Cheers. Here's to another fine holiday in Merlin. Another little trip out. Mm. This one was semi-wild camping. We, we're on a site, um, as I think you know, but we're on um, a grass pitch, so no hookup. And the batteries are holding up fine. Yeah, yeah, we've literally, I've had, to heat some baked beans on the gas hob tonight, and that's the first yeah. time. I've Everything had to else use you've gas. cooked on the electric, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. 
Um, I've used the oven, but that's a different story. But all our kettles of water and when I've been cooking veg and stuff, we've done all of that on the induction yeah. hob. So that's been a result, hasn't it, really? Yeah. Very helpful. Now, we've had a good uh, few days, haven't we, with mm -hmm. Wendy and Brian? Oh, it's been brilliant. And Brian cheating at his games. No, he didn't cheat. To make me lose. No, he didn't. I won twice. Well, that's I won debatable. both games last night, both of them. It's only the second or third time I've played one of them. Beginner's game. luck. Honestly, it's skill, <laughs> but Graham will never admit it. Oh, no, you're very skillful. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so funny because Graham lost in a in a big way as well. <laughs> but I must try not to gloat because I don't like it when he gloats. But he brought it up. Okay. I don't seem to get much chance to gloat lately. No. I seem to lose. <laughs> <laughs> karma. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it is. It's karma. Do you want some stones? So no games night for us tonight. No, at least we'll be peaceful then. We so, won't be uh, uh, yeah, I think we've been... sulks. You're supposed to stop all noise at 11 o'clock at night. And one noise, one one night, uh, got shouted at, didn't we? Ooh. By somebody. Brian couldn't work out if the person was shouting just because or <laughs> whether they were shouting at us. But it was about 10 past 11. Yeah. We, we weren't that loud, but we were laughing. I wasn't that loud. No, no you, were, you were crying, You victors you? were loud. You were crying. We were all <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh, it was good games that we played. So what was one was Rummy Cub, wasn't it? Yeah. Which is a numbers game. Um, and that's brilliant. And what was the other? I can't remember what OK something. Yeah, I keep wanting to say OK Potato, but it's... No, that's the name of the people who made The people made who made it. the game. Um... It's just basically like Connect 5, but four of you can play it, and it's on a table, and it's portable rather than a big a big game where you put discs through. One of those games with very simple rules, but uh, there's quite a lot to it when you get into harder, it. It gets harder. It gets harder the more you get into the game. In fact, both of them are like that, aren't they? Yeah. You start off, and it seems so easy, but as you're playing it, you realise there's more permutations. <laughs> I didn't mind. Well, we could have a, we could play that just you and me, but I don't think it'd be quite as exciting with two people. No, no. But I might win. <laughs> well, you might stand more of a chance. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a one in two chance. Oh, well, that's right. It's one in four, and at least if you lose, it's only against me as opposed to all three of us. Yeah. I'm being naughty. Yeah, that would improve it. I'd come second instead <laughs> of instead of fourth. Yeah, you'd always be second. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so. That's what we're doing tonight. Yeah. Um, we'll catch up with you in the morning when we're packing up. <laughs>